Happy summer solstice, everybody. Sophia Girl Thunderplasm here. Today we're going to be looking back at my Minecraft battle cards. It has been almost a, two years and a half since I last uh, messed with these. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, guys, I do know about the release of Minecraft Dungeons. It, it is out. And that game is pretty fun. I've seen a lot of videos on it by Dungeon Crawlers. And also, I also know about the Nether update for the original Minecraft, which is... It says it has been a like there have been a lot of snapshots about it and it's coming near yeah it's it is coming near about, about all about the new uh, and mobs and stuff like that new items so to, in order for me to make my interest in Minecraft even more bigger I've made some more cards a lot more so for this video it's just going to be me telling you my, the new cards that I made and let's go ahead and get started. The first few mobs here are some mobs. Oh my gosh, focus! Are some mobs found in in some more mobs found in the overworld? First up, we got the Iron Golem, a utility mob that helps villagers raid them. Look at that! On the back, 100 health and 7 to 21 damage. Here is the Vex, spawned by a particular mob that we're gonna get to in a minute. It's a flying hostile mob. A uh, 24 health. 5 to 13 damage, and an Iron Sword carried. Here is the Drowned, a uh, mob that came in the update Aquatic, an underwater variant of the zombie. Uh, 20 health, 4 to 9 damage, and a Trident carried. The Husk, which is the desert variant of the zombie, can be found in desert biomes. 20 health, 2 to 4 attack, and a Hunger effect. The Phantom, which is another... A uh, flying hostile mob spawns if uh, pl the player has not slept for three or more days, I think. Uh, 20 health and 4 to 9 attack. Nothing special. The Evoker, which is an Illager mob that spawns the Vexes. Look at how I made it, so cool. 24 health, 6 damage, and a Clamp Trap Summon. Those are actually called Evocation Fangs. The Ravager, which is a, uh, a large hostile mob that spawns during Illager raids in villages. Look at him, so cool. 100 health, 7 to 18 attack, and Quaking Roar for our special ability. The Pillager, which is one of the main Illagers that can be found in Illager Rage, uh, Rage, Raids. Nice art right there. 24 health, 4 to 10 attack, and a Crossbow carried. The Stray, which is a frozen variant of the Skeleton, can be found in Snowy Biomes. Uh, 20 health, 1 to 5 attack, and slow Slowness Inflict. The Vindicator, which is also another uh, Illager variant. Really, really nice. Looks like a magician almost. 24 health, 7 to 19 damage, and an Iron Axe carried, and a Vex spawn. So that does it for the rest of the uh, overworld mobs. The next few enemies here will be found in the Nether, part of the official Nether update. The awesome, unique Piglin, which is going to be replacing the zombie pigmen. Pretty sad about that. The zombie pigmen were fair enough, but piglins, they're way crazier. 16 health, I think, 3 to 12 attack, golden sword carried, and crossbow carried. Those guys can mess with their shield times. The hoglin, another new enemy, which is a beast-like creature that you can find in the nether. Awesome looking. 40 health and 2 to 12 attack. The zombified piglin, and in order for this thing to spawn, it has to go through to the overworld, uh, uh, the over overworld for about 20 seconds, and then it will change its skin. A uh, 16 health, 2 to 12 attack, and golden sword carried. Same thing can happen to a hoglin, which turns into a zoglin. Really scary looking. Uh, 40 health and 2 to 12 attack. That does it for the. Uh, Nether enemies, and I do know about the Strider, but that one's passive. These next three mobs here are probably unused, either unused or un unimplemented or removed. Here is the Killer Bunny. One rabid looking feisty rabbit here. Three attack, five to twelve, sorry, three health, five to twelve attack, and eight defense. Next up is the Giant. Just a giant variant of the zombie. Uh, 100 health and 50 uh, attack. And the Illusioner, uh, another Illager variant, but is really, really feisty to deal with. 32 health, 1 to 5 damage, and Illusion Brew. 
So that does it for those mobs. These next three enemies here are ones you will, uh, they, that have, uh, failed to win the, uh, I believe it was a Minecraft Mob Cup Edition. One win, these did not. The Titan Squid, which is, uh, I believe this, the, no, the, the other name for this is the Monster of the Ocean Deaths. It's just a giant squid. Uh, 150 health, 6 to 8 damage, and slowness inflict. The Great Hunger, which is a really annoying mob. It's small, but very annoying. Uh, 75 health, 5 to 6 attack, levitation inflict, duplication mechanic, and utility unenchant. Yes, it can swallow items and unenchant them, which is really, really annoying. The Master Blaze, which I believe was supposed to be a new mini boss in the Nether. Really nice, it's just a really modified blaze. Uh, 150 health, 5 to 6 damage, infinite uh, defense when close, fireball range, and closed flaps. So that does it for the mobs who did not win the uh, mob contest or whatever it's called. Okay, these next few enemies here are going to be from Minecraft Ultimate. If you don't realize, Minecraft Ultimate is a game that's going to be coming out December 2nd, 2020. I can't wait to see what that's all about. These are the new enemies that you're going to encounter in it. I've got all of these from the Minecraft Ultimate Wiki. The Kappa. Jeez, thunder is outside. The Kappa, which is a turtle-like creature with the water bucket on its head. Yeah, really funny. Uh, let's see. 15 health, 1 to 5 damage, and item theft, and healing 2-0. You can heal with water. The Zephyr, which is a cloud, little cloud mob that floats in the air during the daytime. Let's see. 15 health, 1 damage, and cloud ball hurl. The Philiath, which is like a beast flower. You know those those uh, Venus flytraps? This is what it is. It hunts down players, though. Or other mobs, I think. Uh, 10 health, 10 damage, and regenera regeneration to apply. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this mob correctly, but Acatrice is a bird found in the aether dimension that I'm gonna get to. Uh, 16 health, 4 damage, blindness inflict, and nausea inflict. Tricky bird to deal with. The Tempest, which is the nighttime variant of the Zephyr. It's more dangerous. 15 health and 5 damage. The Death Worm, which can be found in deserts, kind of like giant sandworms, like the myth of those things. Uh, 10 to 55 uh, health, because they come in sizes, different sizes. 3 to 11 damage and ability for sandblast. The Siren, which is a lovely humanoid creature, but it's very dangerous. Can be found, I believe, on uh, rocks in the midst of the sea. 20 health, 3 attack, and attractive song, which is not so friendly. The Shark, which we're finally going to have a shark in the game. Holy moly. There it is, even though it has red eyes. 30 health and 3 to 7 damage. The Sarcosuchus, which is a large crocodile that lived in the prehistoric times. So this this mob will spawn in swamps. Uh, 15 to 70 health and 10 damage. What a big croc. The Dolahan, and for those of you who do not know who what the Dolahan is, in Irish legend, Irish legend, it is a headless being that carries its head around and it carries uh, something else. Hang on. 35 health. 10 to 14 attack, head chug, and spine whip carried. Oh, and also it rides a horse. So it's basically an Irish headless horseman. The sea serpent. Yep, yeah, they're also seeing a sea serpent in this game. Look at them. So cool. 60 health and 1 to 11 damage. The trollager, which is a villager variant, but it's a giant hostile mob that spawns in the night. Uh, let's see. 40 health. 6 to 10 damage, block chuck, and ground smash. The Wendigo, which is a really, really creepy mob that spawns in the night in taiga biomes. Uh, 35, 35 health, 4 to 7 damage, and shapeshift morphed. Yeah, it can switch between more, uh, forms of mobs, which is really, really tricky. Here's a werewolf, another terrifying enemy. 2, 20 to 40... Health 2 to 6 damage and villager shapeshift. It has the ability to shapeshift into a villager. And here we go into the nether for Minecraft Ultimate. So here's the nether spider. Here we go. It's the bigger version of another spider, which is going to be up next. 10 health, 2 to 3 damage and venom effect. The infernal spider, which is the 
smaller variants of the spiders you'll find in the nether. Nine health, one attack, and fire inflict. Yeah, this thing can bite you and it burns. Pretty much like a fire ant, but way worse. The Blazing Juggernaut, a new enemy to encounter in the uh, Nether Fortress. Really cool, a buff version of a blaze. Uh, 25 health, 5 damage, and self flam burst. Pretty much like blazes do. The Carmenite Gasling, which is a small gas, which is a servant of somebody. Hang on. 10 health and 6 damage. Nothing really special there. The Carmenite Gas Guard, which is a... The Gas Guard, which is a bigger servant. Relax. You, you can notice those uh, little pink marks there. Uh, 30 health and also 6 damage. The Urgast, which is a new boss you will come across in the Nether. Just, much a, just pretty much a gas with extra tentacles and lots of pink messes all around itself. 250 health, 300, sorry, 3 to 16 damage, and ability for tear fall. The Blazing Charger, which is like a flaming bull that you can find in the, in the nether. So angry looking. 16 health and 1 to 3 damage. The nether zombie, as you guess, it is a nether variant of the zombie. Uh, 20 health, 3 to 6 uh, um, damage, armor wardrobe, and weapon badge. So you can choose any weapon it wants. The Wraith, which is a spirit-like entity that spawns near Soul Sand. So the first ever ghost in Minecraft. Uh, 20 health, 2 and a half damage, and slow slowness inflict if the player is hit. The Soul Lion, which is another uh, ghostly variant, but it is uh, just a lion. Pretty much like ghostly. Um, 30 health again, two and a half damage, slowness inflict, and invisibility mechanics. So it has the ability to turn invisible. And finally, for nether enemies, we have the lava serpent. This is guys a really tricky guy to deal with. It is pretty much hard if you encounter one ever in Nether in Minecraft Ultimate, which will come out soon. Uh, 60 health, one and one to eleven attack. So that does it for Minecraft Ultimate mobs. The next few enemies here will be found in the Aether mod, or the Aether Dimension. For those of you who don't know what the Aether is, it's basically the opposite of the Nether, so it's like heavenly. You can find it above the clouds, and if you fall down from that dimension, you will fall back down to the overworld. So here are the enemies that you can find in the Aether Dimension! Jeez Louise! Here's the Sweat, which is the Aether variant of the slime. Really, really cute. Uh, 10 health, 6 damage, and engulf mechanic. It can like hop on your head and cause damage. The cockatrice, which is a really beautiful bird, yet a dangerous one. Look at it. So cool. 10 health, 4 damage, venom effect, and nausea inflict. The acre plant, which if it can look beautiful, it's really hostile, so don't go near it. Uh, 12 to 8 health, sorry, 12 to 18 health, and 1 venom attack. The Sentry, an El mob you can find in the bronze dungeons up in the Aether. Yes, there are bronze, silver, and gold dungeons. I'll get to those in a second. Two and a half uh, health and two damage. The Valkyrie, a mob you would find in the silver dungeon. A servant of a certain someone. Twenty health, three damage, and a lance carried. The Battle Sentry, a much more, uh, I think, dangerous version of the variant of the Sentry. Also found in bronze dungeons. 8 health and 2 attack. A sentry golem, yet another mob found in the bronze dungeon. All cool and stuff. 20 health and 2 attack. The tracking golem, yet another one found in bronze dungeons. This one is a lot more dangerous though. Uh, 20 health, 2 attack, slow, slow, slowness, 4 inflict, and nausea, 4 inflict. The sentry guardian, one of the three mini bosses you need to defeat in order to unlock the boss of the bronze dungeon. 166 health, 18 attack, and it can spawn sentries. The slider host mimic, another one of the mini bosses you would have to defeat. It's, I, trust me, I know it's just like a swirly thing, but it's life. 120 health, 6 damage, and a host eye spawn. The labyrinth eye. A really, really cool looking boss. The final one you have to beat in order to get the bronze dungeon boss. 250 health, 4.5 attack, and loose gears as its special ability.
the slider, the official boss of the bronze dungeon, which you have to beat the the uh, Century Garden Guardian, the slider host mimic and the labyrinth eye to fight this dude. Five hundred health and eight damage. The Valkyrie Queen, which is the boss of the Silver Dungeon. High, lost high tier. She drops awesome stuff when you defeat her. 250 health, uh, 3 attack, destructive orb, and teleportation mechanic. Yes, the Valkyrie Queen can teleport. The Fire Minion, the boss, uh, no, not the boss, but the servant of a boss of the Gold Dungeon, which is up next. 25 health and the ability for Fury Bump. And the Sun Spirit, which is the boss of the Gold Dungeon in the Aether. Look at it. It's flaming body. Uh, 5, sorry, 50 health, right? And this attacks are Sunball, Fire Placement, or Fire Minion Spawn. That does it for all the Aether enemies. Okay, guys, I think we're about done with, halfway done with all the cards. Oh, hey, Thunderplasm bot. Hello, Sophie and God, Thunderplasm. How are you liking the cards so far? They're really great. I can't wait to see what the rest are. Neither am I, buddy. Don't worry, they're coming soon. Okay. In fact, they're coming right now. Okay, I will guess I'll take my leave. Man, it was nice seeing that old buddy again. The next enemies here will be found in the, in the uh, Between Lands mod or Dimension, which is a swampy-like area. The Blood Snail, which is a really aggressive snail. Look at it. 5 health, 2-3 to three attack, and Blood Jet for the ability. The Leash, which latches onto you and you take constant damage. You and like pretty much leeches in real life. Uh, 20 health and 2 to 4 attack. The Shallow Breath, which is not really a mob, it's just a floating poison cloud. 16, uh, let's see, 16 health and 2 damage plus venom damage. The Silt Crab, which is a rather annoying mob to deal with, rather than just being plain hostile, although it is pretty hostile. Uh, 8 health and 2 to 4 attack. The Sludge, which is a Between Lands variant of the Slime. It has a little skull inside. Oh, jeez. Uh, 20 health and 1 to 2 attack. Nothing really special there. The Splode Shroom, which is a really, uh, just a standard mushroom. You'll see it back in a second. Uh, 5 health, Exiler of Decay, and Blindness Inflict. Not really much. It explodes, it's gone. Pretty much... The between lens variant of a creeper, but less effective. The the dark druid, which is actually a key enemy to getting into the between lands. Uh, fifty health, three to seven attack, and teleportation mechanic. These guys can teleport as well. The sludge worm, which comes in, uh, I believe, three different variants from tiny to large. Yeah, as it says for the health, five to twenty health, zero to two attack, and nothing special there. The Lamprey, which can be found on the walls of the Sludge Den, a structure that you would have to go into to get something. Uh, 3, I'm sorry, 20 health, 3 to 6 attack, or I believe it was one, it's 1 to 6, and nothing special. The Lurker, which is a rather neutral reptilian mo mob that will spawn in waters. It's neutral, but if you provoke it, it'll become hostile. Uh, 55 health and 3 to 8 attack. The Pyrad, which is the only other neutral mob in the Between Lands, is a floating spirit-like entity which relies on trees, I think. 60 health, 4 to 9 attack, and Pyrad Flame for a special ability. The Angular, which you would guess it's an Anglerfish, spawns in waters as well. Uh, 20 health, 2 to 3 attack, and Bioluminescent Flashlight for a special ability. The Ash Sprite, which, come, which can be found by Breaking Pots, I believe. 14 health and 4 attack. Nothing special. The boulder sprite, which can be found in caves, and it blunts it really well, which is, which is surrounded. So watch out for this. This guy's also really tough. Uh, 50 health, 3 to 17 attack, and rock hard roll. The either it, It's either pronounced Chirma or Kurma. I think Kurma was the correct term. It's a bat-like creature, which can be found in caves. Also found in caves. 10 health and 2 to 3 attack. The Shambler, which I believe is also found in the Sludge Gen, a really, really creepy, lo creepy looking creature, Twen 20 health and 1 damage every second. The Sludge Jet Turret, which can be also found in the Sludge Gen, pretty much nothing but just a flying turret, 5 health and 2 damage. 
The term mites, which can be found by breaking wood or breaking pots, really rotting wood. Uh, 8 health and 1 attack. So it's pretty much like the spider variant, or between lands variant of a spider, you know what I mean. The tar beast, which is a really hulking beast that can be found in tar pits, I believe. I forgot which biome it spawns in. 100 health, 4 to 9 attack. AA means amulet, a amulet apply, because the pink thing, the pink gem here means amulet. Tar explosion and suffocation mechanic. It can suffocate you in its own self, I think. Really, really messed up and creepy. The white. The Enderman variants are the Between Lands version of the Enderman, but way more scarier, way more dangerous. It's a lifeless being, a really lifeless being, but it can mess your days up. And a really creepy name that fits this guy really well. 76 health, 3 to 9 attack, amulet apply, and volatile possession. It can possess players, damaging it. The Peat Mummy, which is a really, really gross humanoid figure that has been buried in mud for so long and came back to life. F uh, 110 health, so these guys are pretty tough. 4 to 14 attack, amulet apply once again, deafening scream, and charge mechanic. The Swamp Hag, which is a simple zombie variant of the... Or, uh, between lens variant of the zombie, can be found in caves and the overworld swamps. 40 health, or not overall, but the between land swamps. 40 health, 3 to 6 attack, and once again, amulet apply. The Crypt Crawler, which is a really disgusting rat like creature. I believe this, can, this one can be also found in the Sludge Den. Uh, 20 to 200 health, and 4 attack. So they can be pretty tough at some times. The Temple Guardian, which is an unimplemented mob in the uh, Between Land series. It comes in, this, this is one out of three variants, but I decided to draw only just one. 80 health, 7 to 10 attack, and Guardian Weaponry. There's three different types of Guardians, each with a different weapon. The Bear is She, which just has this as the doors, and it's actually a mini boss found in the Sludge Den in the Between Lands. 200 health, 4 to 10 attack, Sonic Scream, and Shock Wave attack for some special abilities. The Spirit Tree, which is a the mini boss, or I think the only mini boss in the Between Lands, can be found in the Overworld. Or you know what I mean, right? Two twenty to six hundred health. That's because it comes in different faces that you have to defeat. Plus the main face, three hundred eighteen attack, three to eighteen attack. Root Spit, Sap Spit, Root Wave, and Root Entanglement for special abilities. So that's a quite a lot of specials. The Dreadful Peep Mummy, which regular Peep Mummies serve this guy, which is one of the bosses in the Between Lands. 550 health, so 5 times the original Peep Mummy. 5 to 12 attack, Peep Mummy spawns Sludge Ball Shot, Fleshy Snatch, and Amulet Apply. Man, that's a lot. The Sludge Menace, which can be found uh, in the Pit of Decay in the Sludge Den. A uh, giant tentacle, it's also another boss. 600 health, and the attacks are down here. Sludge Spawn, Pierce Attack, which does 4 damage. Grab and Heal, Minion Summon, and Self Turn On, which does 6 damage. Man. The Primordial Malevolence, a, a, the, another boss you would find atop the White Fortress. Look at it, it's a, like a giant prism. 320 attack, two, for, 2 damage for all attacks, and the Purple Shader effect. And last but not least for the Between Lands, we have the Prime White, which is the upcoming final boss of the Between Lands. This one has been ruled for his own hatred and stuff like that. I forgot how his, how his uh, description goes. But his real name in in his life form, his name was, uh, I believe, Revel O. Elkenrab. And there's it. It's a giant spirit, pretty much sir, uh, king of all whites. 1,500 health, 10 to 14 attack. White Summon and Nightmare's Possession for some uh, pretty, pretty nasty specials. That does it for the Between Lands mobs. We're almost done, Thunder Blossom Bot. Only a few more batches to go. Or I believe one more batch. Sweet, I can't wait to see what the mobs are. The last few batch of enemy the last batch of enemies here are some custom mobs that I found from the Primitive Mobs Wiki and some other YouTube videos of showcase mob showcases. These there are so many that I couldn't get them all, and I would run out of more index cards by then. So these are the ones I decided to draw. The Lily Lurker, which mimics Lily so well, don't fall right into its traps. Just a fish, really aggressive fish with a Lily antenna. Twenty health and four attack. The Bewitched Tome, which is a haunted book. Look at this thing. 20 health and 2 attack. 
the Grove Sprite, which is a mob very, very, very reliable for trees. So this is a tree-like entity. 20 health and 3 attack, although this thing is neutral. The Chorus Beetle, which is a custom enemy found in the end, because it, it feeds on Chorus Fruit and Chorus is found in the end. Uh, 150 health, 5 to 6 attack, Horn Energy Wave, and Knockback 6 Inflict. So you're going to have a tough time when you encounter this monstrosity. The Illager Golem, which looks like the Totem of Undying in its true form. Look at that. So this is the first hostile golem you have to come across. 100 health and 17 attack. The Naga, which is a snake boss that can be found in certain jungle areas. Really cool. It's, it really is a giant snake. Pretty much like the Titan of Bowen in prehistoric times. 250 health, 4 to 8 attack, and venom effect. As you know, snakes do have venom. The Cave Crawler, which looks like it's a silverfish. And uh, it can be found in caves, as you would know. 8 health, 1 attack, and item drop. It can come in different uh, forms, like diamond cave crawler, redstone cave crawler, all of that good stuff. The undead miner, which is a dead villager, well, undead villager, that has been mining caves for like many years. 15 health, 2 to 3 attack, and a stone pickaxe carried. The spider matriarch, which is a cave boss. A giant spider, as you would know it. Look at that thing. 250 health, 7 attack, spider birth, nest weave, and teleportation mechanic. I don't know why, but this thing can absolutely teleport. The scorpion, which can be found in deserts, looks like a spider but has claws and a tail. 25 health, 2 attack, and a venom effect. The frigid, which is the frozen variant of a zombie, apart from the- so this thing is friends with the stray. 20 health, 2 attack, and slow, slowness 3 inflict. The Welter, which is a desert variant of the Skeleton, so this thing is friends with the Husk. 20 health, 2 attack, and the Hunger Arrow. It cares about like regular Skeletons too, just so you know. The Mummy, which is a mob that can be found in Desert Temples, if, if those things were ever updated because they're just plain boring. 20 health and 2 attack, nothing special. The Nether Rock, which is a giant humanoid custom basket that can be found in the... uh. That can be found in the nether. Uh, but it has to be summoned after defeating the Master Blaze. 500 health, 10 to 15 attack, and me nether minion spawn. It can spawn, it can spawn any nether minion at once, which can, can be really tough. And finally, for custom mobs, we have the nether demon, a very powerful player size entity that you have to deal with. Not a boss, which is great. 40 health, 3 uh, attack, enchanted blaze rod carry, and knockback inflict. Boy, oh boy. I don't even care if my cards are in a mess. That was awesome. Uh, really awesome. Really good. I'm glad I made a lot of cards. And it took me so long. I actually started making these in February and saving up to this day. And boy, that's a lot. I can't even count. Apart from uh, having it with my uh, original cards, I really don't know how much I'm going to have total. What do you think of, What do you think about this overall, Thunderplasm bot? Really cool. Even though there are lots of mobs, I really like all of them. You know what? I'm gonna have to agree with you. So, guys, that's gonna have to do it for the Minecraft, the return of the Minecraft Battle Cards. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I believe there will be uh, more things to come soon. So, I can't wait to see what's gonna come for my cards next. So, with that being said, hang on, sorry. Oh, I thought I was missing something. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Sophia Gar, wait. What is the Thunderplasm bot? You're forgetting one more thing. What is it? I have to, I have to show the viewers a hint for a future video. Okay, at least one hint. Yes, at least one hint. Here we go. Calculating hints for future videos. Wait, is that a? Come here. Okay, I can't really see that. Oh my, that's a. Oh my gosh, I know what is going to be coming to the viewers one day, and I bet they are going to love it. Holy moly, Donald Blasenbaugh, did you give me an idea? This is Sol Fico, Total Blossom, signing out. Stay futuristic!